Good morning. Today, Saturday, May 11th, we look at first or Second Kings 15 through 18. Uh, we're going to combine one of tomorrow's chapters today. Um, as we begin, you know, it says in the 27th year of King Jeroboam, of, who was the king of Israel, and he will rule for a total of 41 years in Israel. <clears throat> but it, you know, in this 27th year, though, Azariah becomes king of Judah. And he will rule for 52 years in Judah. So there's, um, you know, what, 15 years or so that, that these two kings rule, you know, in conjunction with each other, northern kingdom, southern kingdom. But then in the 38th year of Azariah of Judah, uh, in just very short succession, we have five different kings of, of Israel. Uh, you know, uh, in chapter verse eight, you know it says that uh, Zechariah, son of Jeroboam, reigns for six months, and then he is killed by Shalom, and um, and this this king is he's the last of the line of Yehu, Jehu, because you know God had told him that you know his sons to the fourth generation would rule, and and so this is the culmination. Uh, the final, final of of the rule of of his sons and his his prodigy prodig, pro, prodigy that way his his children, and then in the so that was in the thirty eighth year that Zechariah started, and then in the thirty ninth year it's you know Shalom and he reigns one month, and, and then there's you know another person comes in and murders this king, you know so it's. You know, a lot going on, but in just this real short time, there will be five kings of of Israel. And they're, you know, just coming upon each other that way. When we get to verse 23, it's in the 50th year of King Azariah. Then this Pekah comes, you know, and, and he's the fourth of these five that are going to be in short order time. Um, and then in verse 27, in the 52nd year, so this is now the final year that that uh, Azariah will be the king of Judah. Uh, Pekah becomes the king of, of Israel, and he will reign for 28 years in Israel. So now as we read on, we're going to have some, you know, some of the kings of Judah relating to how many years uh, Pekah had been king of Israel. Uh, so in verse 32, it's the second year of King Pekah, you know, Jotham becomes king and, and well, he reigns for 25 years. So, uh, but he was 16 when he began to reign. And it says, you know, he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but he didn't remove the high places. And so people still were going out and making sacrifices and worshiping, you know, other places than what they should, and, and worshiping false gods and offering sacrifices to false gods. Chapter 16, in the 17th year of Pekah, then Ahaz becomes king. He was 20, and he reigned for 16 years, and but it says that, you know, he walked in the ways of the king. He, he did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord, um, and this was... Um, kind of different, but he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel. You know, so this king of Judah wasn't faithful to God. And most of the kings of Judah had remained faithful that way. Um, but this king, you know, um, made abominable practices of the Lord, you know, and, and so he, he, he wasn't favorable to God. Whereas, you know, the majority of the kings of Judah had at least had some respect for God that way. Um, and it was just, we continue going on with more kings. And we're getting to the point now of, um, um, we're, we're getting close to the end of the kingdom of Israel. I mean, we're, we're at about like 750 BC and it's, you know, in 721, or I don't remember the exact year, but Jerusalem falls, or I mean, not, but Israel falls. But the, there's so much turmoil with the kings and people not worshiping God right that, you know, they're just, 
you God has started to seems like let other nations come in and capture different places and and um, and 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 worship different ways and you know so Israel is is falling apart. In verse ten, when King Ahaz goes to Damascus, he sees an altar that was in Damascus, and he sends to the priest Uriah to have him make an altar just like this one. And then it tells us as we go on that, you know, they built this altar and then they had to remove some of the other fixtures from in the, in the sanctuary, in the, in the house of the Lord. And we get down into verse, you know, 17, 18, 19, they, they were removing other parts, other you know, valuable things. And why? Because the king of Israel was paying the king of Assyria for, um, for protection. And, you know, you know, maybe it was blackmail. I don't know, but you know, they were, they were having to sell off some of the, some of the pieces of, of worship, you know, to, to protect themselves. And, uh, it's just, uh, you know, their, the, the temple is, is kind of starting to fall apart. Um, chapter 17 begins in the 12th year of King Ahaz of Judah, Hoshea, son of Eli, becomes king of, of Israel. And he reigns nine years. And he is the last king of Israel. And, and we don't have the end of Israel for a couple chapters yet. But, you know, he, this Ho, Hoshea, Hoshea that, that becomes king um, is the last king that we will encounter of Israel. Um, and it says, He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, yet not like all who were before him. Um, but there was, you know, the king of Assyria finds treachery in him, where, you know, the, the king before, Ahaz, had been paying the king of Assyria, then this, this new king um, isn't, he isn't uh, doing everything that's right there according to that. And, and, and um, he, he, it says, therefore the king of Assyria come, confined and imprisoned him, you know? And, um, and then the king of Assyria invaded the whole land. And in the ninth year of Hosea, king of Assyria, he captured Samaria, carried the Israelites away, um, and, and so, you know, it says in the ninth year, and that's, but yet we aren't told about the ending here yet. But as we read verses 7 through 18 of chapter 17, this is, this is really going to remind us of, of, of the sins and the evils of the people and how they fall away from God and fall out of God's favor you know, it starts out, this occurred because the people of Israel sinned against the Lord their God. And as a reminder, who had brought them out of Egypt under the hand of Pharaoh. They worshipped other gods. They walked in the customs of their nations. They did things that were not right in the eyes of the Lord. They built altars for themselves. And so basically these, from verse 7 through 18, we're, we're seeing the rejection of God by the people of Israel. And, and it's just, uh, verse 18 says, Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. None was left with the tribe of Judah alone. And so, you know, we have the indication right here that this is the, the fall of Israel, the end of Israel. And, and so the, you know, at the time of, at the time this happened, this is, you know, 721 B.C., that, that Israel ceases now then to become a nation, although we're going to hear a little bit more about about this this king, this final king. Uh, it seems to me we read a little bit more about him. But um, so, but then in verse 19, it starts, But Judah also did not keep the commandments of the Lord, but walked in the customs that Israel had. And the Lord rejected all the Israel, the descendants and punished them and gave them into the hand of plunderers until he had banished them from his presence. And um, it, it, it's just, it's such a sad, sad story, I think, of, 
If you, if you know, God is so faithful and God is so patient, but yet the people continue to sin and um, continue to you know, go downhill. And and we, we just we're going to continue to find that down downward spiral of the people as we you know read some more of these chapters because by the time we get I mean there's another it's 721 BC when when Israel is you know, completely gone and it's you know 586 so another 140 years roughly before Judah falls completely as well. Um, but there's a, a telltale verse, verse 33 of, of chapter 17. It says, So they worshiped the Lord, but served their own gods after the manner of the nations who had carried them away. So even though they worshiped God, they followed the customs and traditions of, of others. You know, they were worshiping other you know, and it was God said, you know, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods. And the the Israelites just couldn't adhere to that. And I and I think too, I mean, we're <laughs> we're kinda guilty. The same thing in our world today. 